This video lecture will cover process tracing, which explores the ways that small end researchers engage in hypothesis testing. So to think a little bit more about process tracing, let's start with an example. So here's a kind of question that we might, as a small end researcher study, which would be looking at why did Maine legalize marijuana when New Hampshire did not? Um, several years ago, Maine decided to legalize marijuana, and we see that this is a place that has both recreational and medical marijuana, but next door, neighboring New Hampshire didn't legalize it. Despite the states having a lot in common, we see these different policy outcomes. So what, how can we understand this? So imagine you're going through and you're thinking up a couple of hypotheses that you might want to test. The first one might be that there was greater citizen mobilization for legalization in Maine than there was in New Hampshire. Maybe there was a bigger pro-coalition. Or alternatively, maybe there was a bigger anti-level um, of mobilization in New Hampshire than there was in Maine, that they were able to be strong enough to veto it. Another hypothesis might be that politicians in Maine favored legalization, but politicians in New Hampshire opposed it, and that's really the key. So you might go through and you develop these hypotheses, and at first glance they might fit the cases, but you're not sure if that's actually the real reason behind it. In other words, just showing the correlation between these independent variables and the outcome of legalization is not enough. It's not really very convincing. And so what you need to do is actually go through and show me that there's a causal process happening. So that's what we do with process tracing. Um, so hypothesis testing in small n research looks at testing hypotheses by mapping out these causal processes at a really fine-grained micro level through what we call process tracing. And process tracing, here's a, a definition that I'm going to go through and break down, is a process of evaluating diagnosis, diagnostic pieces of evidence that follow a temporal sequence with the ultimate goal of causal inference. Okay, so there's three parts to this, evaluating diagnostic pieces of evidence, second part, the temporal sequence, and the final part is the goal of causal inference. So I'm gonna explain each of those by going back to that example I just mentioned of uh, marijuana legalization in Maine versus not having it in New Hampshire. So the first part, evaluating diagnostic pieces of evidence, well, what you want to do with this when you're doing process tracing is take those hypotheses. Remember, we had those three hypotheses, one about the people that were in favor of marijuana legalization, one about groups opposed to it, and one about politicians, and you map them out into as much detail as you possibly can. This isn't just identifying independent variable, dependent variable, and then one intervening variable. Oh, no. What you want to do is break it down to as many steps as possible. So you have independent variable, and then each of these little intervening variables along the way that ultimately lead to why. So let's take that example that we were talking about with marijuana legalization. Um, so you might have, say, that you have this opposition from um, some mobilized group like law enforcement. So the law enforcement opposed at New Hampshire, and then that caused them to form an issue pack about marijuana legalization, which enables these opponents to engage in intensive fundraising they needed for ad campaigns. They raised a ton of money. And then because they'd raised all that money, they were able to have a high number of radio and TV ads that just proliferated everywhere. And that these uh, ads changed public opinion um, after the ad rollout happened. And when you change public opinion, the public is pressuring politicians and the politicians report that there was pressure, um, that there was not pressure to vote for legalization. And then as a result, legalization bills stall in the legislature and there's no legalization. Right. So I'm laying out each of these steps along the way that you would need to have if the hypothesis is indeed true. You can't just say, oh, well, law enforcement opposed it in New Hampshire and you didn't have legalization because you don't know if that law enforcement really actually mattered for the outcome of not having legalization. You need to break it down into as many steps as possible. Okay, so the first step is just logically laying out what you think would happen if that hypothesis were true. And then the next step is that you collect data. 
to assess each of these um, little steps along the way to identify causal process observations. So we had this in a previous video lecture, but remember a causal process observation is evidence of some sort of causal process or mechanism. And so let's think again here, you know, we had all these little different steps along the way. Um, and so one of them would be that you have um, this pack that is raising money for um, law enforcement officers who are opposed to legalization um, and so that they are creating new ads. So you want to see evidence that they actually are using money to create ads, right? Um, and then maybe you'd want to see, okay, so what's happening at the, the legislature? You want to talk to people from the legislature and say, are you actually receiving calls What's going on? Who is pressuring you? Do you feel pressured? Um, which way is the is the the push leaning at this moment? And so, what you want to do here is that you want to collect data for each of these little variables along the way, and your ultimate goal is what we call data triangulation. So you're triangulating. You're trying to get um, some sort of confirmation across multiple different sources of evidence that would confirm the claim. So you can't just have the like an interview, say, that you might do with somebody who is from um, law enforcement officers and ask them, oh, did you have a lot of influence? And they say, oh, yes, it was because of us that legislatures felt like they they had a lot of pressure on this issue. You know, you'd want to talk to them, but then you also maybe would talk, want to talk to people in the legislature and ask them what they think. And then maybe you would want to match that up with looking at the official public record to see if there were any mentions in the record um, from a legislative session about, you know, what were the, the most important issues and what people said in that moment, maybe see if there were any newspaper reports. The idea is that you're not just relying on one so solitary piece of evidence, but trying to look at this from different angles to get confirmation. Right. And so you're doing this for each of these little steps along the way. This is one of the reasons why process testing um, can't really be done with lots of cases, because each step involves a lot of work and involves a lot of evidence that you have to collect and put together in a creative way. And it just takes time and space. So you couldn't really do it for 100 cases. And so you want to do it for just a couple. So this is the evaluating diagnostic pieces of evidence. The next part is that with process tracing, we're talking about something following a particular temporal sequence. So if you want to avoid mistaking correlation and causality, timing and ordering matter a lot when you're talking about each of those little intervening variables along the way. So here again, just laying out each of these. So if you're doing careful process tracing, you can show that, first of all, W3 happens before W4, which then happens leads to W5, which then leads to, to Y, right? That you're mapping out this and you're seeing actually literally what happens first. So for example, if you're saying that public opinion changed because there was this proliferation of ads, well, did anti-legalization ads come before you have a public opinion change? You might look at trends in public opinion, and if you see that there is no change whatsoever, or if people over time um, are becoming more and more in favor of marijuana legalization, even as you have anti-legalization ads happen, you know that doesn't really support your, your claims. Um, likewise, if you wanted to say that um, these ads were dependent on the formation of a PAC, you know, you'd want to see, well, did the PAC form first? and then they raised money, and then they had money to buy ads. If it turns out that um, the people who are sponsoring the ads aren't you know, the law enforcement, then that kind of strikes a major blow to, to your claim, right? So you wanna think about this timing and ordering in order to ensure that what you're talking about really is a causal process that's happening. And the final part is to keep in mind what the objectives really are. Like, what are we trying to do with process tracing? And the ultimate goal here is causal inference, right? So process tracing is not just describing what happens first and third, second and the third, you know, just it's just not just mapping out the sequence of something. It's also not same thing as the discipline of history, 
which has a, a different kind of ontological and epistemological basis. So it's not simply this describing things that happened in the past. Instead, what we're trying to do is engage in rigorous hypothesis testing. Um, we want to subject our hypotheses to really careful testing and a lot of scrutiny at this really micro level where we're able to tease out each step along the way. And we also want to evaluate alternative hypotheses along the way. So one of them might be, you know, an explanation about um, the influence of political officials. And for this, you might then say, well, let's see what the politicians were doing, right? And if this was, I had that as the third hypothesis, but maybe this had been an alternative hypothesis that really legalization of marijuana only happens in states where governors support it, well, then you could go through and look at the ways that that Governor Paula Page of Maine um, ardently opposed the legalization of marijuana, and then talk about the ways that proponents of legalization in Maine were able to thwart the governor. And, and so that would be an alternative explanation you would look at and see, oh, does this actually hold uh, and, and really apply the same level of scrutiny to that alternative potential hypothesis as you're giving to your own. So you're not simply coming up with things that you agree with. You're also considering what are the best alternatives that somebody else might argue and then figuring out ways that you might refute them after taking them seriously and considering all the evidence. So the main takeaway here to think about with process tracing is that while we may only be looking at one case or two cases or a couple of cases, the ultimate goal is in a lot of ways similar to what we're doing with a large end study, which is that ultimately we want to get a, a causality, but we're doing it with slightly different tools to try to get to a similar endpoint.